coming out of work. Savior. Glory to God. Thank you for saving me. Praise God. That today. I'm out here to preach the gospel. Feel like the that is God command us to in Mark's in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 says to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's why I'm out here to preach the good news about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm out here. Because the good news, good news for your soul, is good news of eternal life, being the fact that one day we're going to take our last breath. There's a point in our meant to die, then after this comes the judgment. And that's why I'm here to proclaim the gospel, the good news. Is that you're very important and you don't even know it. The fact that you were created in the image and likeness of God, but what happened is that man decide to go astray. They decide to do the opposite of how God created them. And he put in us a conscience. He put in us a conscience. The Bible says that the commandments of God was established in the temple of our hearts. And so that our conscience will tell us and bear what's wrong. It's supposed to tell us between right and wrong. But the fact that we have sinned, we have come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that men have no darkness more than light because of these were evil. And if you look at the beginning of Genesis, it talks about a mind of constantly evil. But that's what Jesus Christ said, that he came to give you a new life and have that life more abundantly. The Bible says that to conform yourself to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how is that renewing of your mind? Is by repenting. And repenting is a change of mind. And we have a change of mind it's supposed to have a change of life. Because now you're directing yourself into another path. The Bible said it's difficult and only a few will enter, a few will find it. One of the things about entering the narrow path is that you have to pick up the cross and follow Jesus. And before that, he says you must first deny yourself. And he said, any man wants to follow me, he said, you must first deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. In other words, he's trying to say that, that you must leave the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's not of God, but it's of the world. And the world perishes in the lust thereof. But the Bible says those who do the will of God abide forever. And that's why I'm here to preach the good news. You see, when you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says you must be saved. You shall be saved. But you, you see, when you come to the light, 
The Bible said that the men love darkness, so when they come to the light, it becomes hateful towards them. Because they don't want to let go the things of the flesh. They got so much stuff chosen in this world and they refuse to give up. And then they start questioning, do I have to give up this? Do I have to give up that? Do I have to give up my sinful lifestyle? You can't be unequally yoked. You cannot walk with God and walk with the devil. You cannot sit in the same table with God and Satan. The Bible said that he said before you life and death to choose life. He said to choose you this day who you will serve. The Bible talks about serving, being a slave. He says you are a slave to which you are bad. Whether it's sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. When you obey the word of God, you live in righteousness. For the scarily and righteous men be saved, the world will be ungodly as sin and would appear. So when we sin, we transgress the law. And it's only just that God will punish us. It's only just that we deserve for the crime we committed. Yes, sin, the transgression of the law. But when you violate the commandments of God, you must expect the consequences that you're going to have. You gotta expect that. Because I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But how nice it is that we can call upon the name of the Lord and He can save us. So while we were yet sinners, the Bible said that Christ died for us. He made Himself to become sin. Having no sin, the Bible says He became the image of sin. He was cursed for us. And I would like to read Isaiah 53. He says here, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. And with his, his stripes we are healed. All we are like a sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet the Bible says here say yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shear is done. Is so he opened not. His mouth, praise Jesus. The sin that Jesus bore, becoming sin for us, and all that, he paid the price. He didn't have to, but he did. That means he was caught at a price. And that's all what Paul said, it's not me who lived for Christ that lives in me. In other words, he's dead to this world, he's dead to his sin, but now he is rich in spirit. And that's why the Bible talks about you must store your treasures in heaven. Because all there's enough vanity and vanity, all is vanity. And what are you going to do with your treasures? What are you going to do with the talents that God has put in your hands? We have talents. We have gifts. There's a lot of people that got talents and gifts in their hands. What are you going to do? How are you going to multiply the talents that God has given you? And the only way you can build that house and build that talents is upon a rock. Jesus Christ said, I am the rock. But you must build your faith. It says, the Bible says, that the foolish built his house upon the sand. And when the winds came and beat on it, he said, great, which is falling. But the wise man built 
his house upon a rock. And when the wind beat on it, it says that it did not fall. It did not get destroyed. Because his house was upon a rock. You see, the world brings trials. The world brings affliction. The Bible says in this world we're going to go through trials and tribulations, through infirmities. But one of the things that Jesus going to say, he said, peace I have, peace I give. But not like the world gives, but I give it. So when the trials hit, the tribulations, the affliction, you can say, I look upon the hills, for where comes my helper? My helper comes from the Lord. And he could deliver you from depression. He could deliver you from suicidal thoughts. If you put your faith in Jesus, when you look upon the hills, when you look upon the Lord, when you look into the heavens, and say, there's a creator. There's a creator that has come down to this world and became a man like you and me, born the sin of this world. Yes, Jesus. He was manifested. He was the word that was made flesh. And he said to preach this word, preach this gospel, preach Jesus to all men everywhere to understand that he wants to give you a new life and so that you can have that life more abundantly. Praise Jesus. Because we were bought at a price. We cannot enter in unless it was through Jesus. He is the mediator between God and man, which is Christ Jesus. It is Him, it is Jesus. He bought us from a price. They would say that we were yet sinners. He died. But it's nice when we put our trust in the Lord. It's nice when we put our burdens. When we put, let them know, Lord knows our weaknesses. And understand there's things that we cannot fight. But only Jesus can fight it for us. Yes, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteous and judgment. It's only through Christ Jesus that He could deliver you from the sin. It's only through Jesus. There's no other way. And so they'll not be fighting our flesh. God bless you, man. Bless you. Now we're fighting our flesh. We're fighting. We try to overcome the world with our own ideas, with our own strength. And what it's doing is damaging us. We try to fight it with our own power. Then we're losing. We try to fight it as much as we can. But all we're doing is taking a step back. Did you know that? The Bible says that I am perfected in your weakness. And you cry to the Lord. I told Jesus I cannot do this. The burden that's on me is tearing me down. The burden that's on me is putting me down. The bird is going to end up killing you if you don't put it in the hands of God. If you don't put and cast your burden to the Lord, that burden, that same burden will kill you. There's a way that you must take off you. And the only way is to put that burden, to put that weight in Jesus. He said, cast your burden upon me. I will give you peace in the storm. I will give you peace in the midst of your trials and tribulation. I want to give you a new life so you can have that life more abundantly. I want to heal the broken hearted. He wants to give you a new heart and a new spirit. He 
Hrvatsku gdje je nije hore na nju spove. Kada mi ceko vajda hore vrak. I give you a hard of me to humble yourself and understand and say I cannot do this and the only way I could do this is casting my burdens to Jesus. That's the only way that you can grow spiritually. That's the only way you can overcome your weakness. That's the only way is to the Spirit It's to the Holy Spirit. When you cast your burdens upon the Lord, He wants to save you. It's like the prodigal son. The prodigal son had everything. He took his earnings and went to the world, and he spent it on necessary things. And he realized at the end, he had nothing. And it's crazy because when you have, your friends go after you. When you have, that's when your friends want to be around you. But the minute you spend it all, the minute you find yourself in crisis, let's see who will stick around. Let's see who will be your friend when you're in your lowest. When you have nothing, That's when you realize who is my friend now. The only one I know is Jesus. He said the fox has homes, the birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to rest his head. It's because he was always ministering. He was always preaching. He was always delivering the message. He was always delivering the message. Hardly any sleep. That's the reason why he found himself in the boat, sleeping through the storms. He is God, but he's also human. He was a hundred percent flesh, hundred percent human. So we will not have excuses. So we will not have excuses.